Hi, my name is Alex Granados. I'm a reporter for Education NC. And my name is Liz Bell, also a reporter for Education NC. And we are here reporting to you live from the General Assembly, where you can see it's pretty quiet. That's because the deadline for crossover was yesterday. This has been a crazy crossover week, but everything is all quiet now. Now, what exactly is crossover week, Alex? So crossover week, well, crossover is a deadline set by the General Assembly. That deadline was yesterday, April 27th. And basically any bill that doesn't have an appropriations or finance element must pass at least one chamber of the General Assembly in order to stay alive. Now, the bill that people have been watching the most this session is House, House Bill 13, which uh, loosens the, restrict, the class size restrictions in grades K through three that were passed in the 2016 session of the General Assembly. Uh, it has, it's not only alive, it has managed to pass the House, the Senate, and then signed by the governor. So that version was a little bit different than the version that originally passed the House, right? Yeah, without going into too much detail, the version that originally passed the House loosened the restrictions considerably more than the Senate version. In fact, the Senate version has a one-year delay on the implementation of the restrictions uh, with some loosening of those restrictions for this year. Um, the, the big debate over the class size restrictions is some schools have been saying that they're not going to have the funds needed to uh, keep their art, their PE, their music teachers, and that sort of thing. Uh, but Senator Chad Barefoot, who was instrumental in revising House Bill 13, has assured everybody that uh, those teachers will continue to be funded. Um, and there are a number of other education bills that also managed to pass at least one chamber and survive to fight another day. Uh, some of the big ones are there was a bill that will change the definition of a low-performing school. Uh, basically, uh, schools that have met growth and have a D, and F, D or F will no longer be considered low-performing under these new definitions, and that should uh, uh, lower the number of schools that are considered low-performing. There were also a couple of bills that are uh, seeking to change the uh, calculation of the A through F performance grades. Uh, basically, these are called school performance grades, and um, they are calculated using a metric of 80% academic achievement and 20% academic growth. Uh, one of the bills that passed would change that to a 50-50 split, and another of the bills that passed would actually make it so that there are two separate grades, one for academic achievement and one for academic growth. Uh, this will all have to be heard by the Senate before uh, anything actually happens, but uh, because they passed one chamber, uh, they will be able to be heard by the Senate if the Senate takes it up. Uh, and there have also been a number of charter bills that passed at least one chamber. Uh, Liz, can you tell us a little bit about those? Right, so there were um, a number of measures um, early this week going through committee and then um, trying to meet the crossover deadline that had to do with charter schools. Um, one would actually allow two towns near Charlotte, Mint Hill and um, the town of Matthews, to operate charter schools. Um, so the governing bodies would, in effect, be like the board of directors of a normal charter school, and that's a model the state hasn't seen before. Um, another, House Bill 800, um, which has also passed the House at this point, has to go to the Senate, would create um, a kind of corporation charter schools uh, where if where the children of the employees at a corporation that is donated um, in some way to the charter school, um, there's some different criteria, whether it's land or school building or technological resources, 50% um, of the enrollment would be <clears throat> held for those um, employees' children, which is also um, something new. So it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. Um, and then yet another charter school would loosen um, and ease the process of charter expansion. Um, right now, if a charter wants to expand by more than 20%, they have to make a material revision to their charter, um, which means they have to go in front of the charter school advisory board and um, meet certain criteria. <clears throat> uh, this bill would um, loosen that in, in some way and um, make that 30% instead. Um, so those will be interesting to follow. There's always a lot of debates swirling around um, charter schools and their place in North Carolina's education system. And Education NC hasn't just been focused on the General Assembly this week. We have a couple of uh, non-legislative things we've been following. Um, you can check out Adam Rue's series on Read Charlotte. Uh, Read Charlotte is an initiative 
that is trying to double the number of students in Charlotte who are reading at grade level uh, by third grade, and they're, they're hoping to double that number by 2025. Um, and then this week I also covered an event at the Raleigh Convention Center that brought uh, the actress Sonia Manzano, who played Maria on Sesame Street for many, many years. Uh, she came to the Triangle and uh, I interviewed her and she talked to me about the importance of early childhood education and about what we can do as adults to make sure that children go on to have success in life. Um, and if you want to know more about any of these issues, you can go to our website at nc.org. And uh, you can also go to our Facebook page, Edu Education NC has a Facebook page, as well as a Twitter page. And if you want to follow me, I tweet a lot about education stuff, and I tweet out our articles. Uh, my handle is at a Granadoster. And Liz, where can Mine people find you? Mine is at Lizabel, um, two L's at the beginning. All right, and that is our wrap-up for the week. Uh, you can look for more from us next week. Thanks for listening. Thanks.